Hello, all you YouTubers. I am the Zion Zeus. And today, I want to do a quick, take a quick um, look at some of the solar flare activity that has happened around some of the major quakes. Um, some of the major quakes that have happened are February 27, 2010. I'm going to have a look at, you can see the date over here, February 27, 2010. And um, we're having a look at what happened. The month of sunspots, February 2010, is on the verge of a three year first. It's the first one since January 2007, with sunspots every single day. Every single day. It's been a long solar minimum, but solar activity is on the rise again. Today, NASA Stereo mission is tracking at least six active regions around the circumference of the sun. So, <coughs> so that's February 27th. So we're going to have a look now at September 4th, 2010, which is obviously the big Christchurch earthquake. And let's see what took place on that day. Hmm, wow. Okay, so limb explosion today around. 16 UT, UT, a magnetic filament erupted and hurled a massive coronal mass ejection CME off the sun's northwestern limb. Click on the l image to view a close up movie of the blast from NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory. Okay, let's have a look then. I click that. Oh, let me use this one. So we can see that on September 4, 2010, something did occur. It looks like there was also a CME that day, um, which would have been around 4 o'clock universal time. One thing I've noticed the last couple of days is uh, I seem to be having intermittent uh, connection, so it could be the uh, solar flares having an impact. Okay, so obviously we have activity going on in here. The lamp. Okay, so let's go back and let's have a look at March 11th, 2011. See if there's any anything going on there. <coughs> which was Chile and uh, Japan quakes uh, Japan quakes I mean. let's have a look Earth's magnetic field is still vibrating from a CMN strike on March 10th during the past 24 hours Northern Lights have ok let's go back one day and let's see what happened on March 10th then. another CME CME impact, a coronal mass ejection hit Earth's magnetic field on March 10th around 0630 U Universal Time. The impact, albeit weak, did provoke geomagnetic activity around the poles. High latitude, sky watchers should remain alert for auroras. Well, so there's something definitely happened on uh, March 10th, the day before the big quake. Um, hmm, interesting. Update. What's this? Newly arriving coronagraph data from the Solar and Helospheric Observatory show no bright CME emerging from this eruption. Some material was surely hurled in our direction, but probably not enough for significant Earth effects. Okay, so that was a uh, March. Looks like this is the sunspots that popped up. What was the name of these? As a four years out, next flare, the sun. So the sun became active in uh, 2011. Let's have a look at some dates now. So 
if we look at our solar flare activity in the last cycle it was back on December 14th 2006 and let's have a look at that 2006 and <coughs> this is the last cycle uh, CMA, CME was hurled towards Earth on December 13th by an X3 class explosion from some spot 90 so between 2006 and 2011 there was no um, activity and all of a sudden in 2011 starting on Me February 15th 2011 we started having much higher increase in solar activity first flare of the new solar cycle sunspot 1158 has unleashed the strongest solar flare in more than four years the eruption would peaked at 0156 universal time on february 15 resident x2 on the richter scale of solar flares nasa solar dynamics observatory recorded an intense flash of extreme ultraviolet radiation circle below so this year we've been getting impact Wow, that's a big, uh, that's a pretty big uh, flare right there. So you can see, bang, comes out. Okay, so this year we're having an upshot in flare activity. So let's have a look at another date. March 9th, which is obviously two days before March 11th this year. Do we have anything going on then? So we had something going on in February something going on in March let's have a look <coughs> and yep we had another X flare earth orbiting satellites have just detected an impulse X1 class solar flare stay tuned for analysis fast coronal mass ejection a coronal mass ejection CMA exploded from the vicinity of sunspot 1164 during the late hours of March 7th it leapt away from the sun traveling two two zero zero kilometers per second making it the fastest CME since September 2005 so um, this date is March 9 so this is two days before that major 9.0 earthquake and um, we had an upshot in uh, X flare activity so let's go to uh, August 9th which is the next um, date in 2011 and um, we had another flare in 2000, obviously uh, t August is closer to September now, obviously. Uh, major solar flare. This morning, 0805 UT, sunspot 1263 produced an X7 solar flare. Only the third X flare of the new solar cycle 24. And the most powerful so far. It's funny how 24 equals 6, by the way. 2 plus 4 is 6. Let's have a look at this. Hmm. So you can have a look at this one. Wow. That's pretty major, folks. And here's our scale up here. Let's see, can we look at that again, maybe? Um. Well, that's that's pretty that's a major flare. That was the one that came up in August. So something either the sun's trying to protect itself from something coming near it, projecting out these uh flares to kind of push an object away, or it's having an increase in activity for some reason. <coughs> so uh September sixth then, the last couple of days the sun has become extremely active. Very, very active. Uh so let's have a look at September sixth. And now, see what was going on. And um, we had an Earth directed flare this morning at 0150 Universal Time. Sunspot 1283 produced an M5 class solar flare. NASA Solar Dynamics Observatory recorded a flash of extreme ultraviolet radiation. So, this is the flare. They don't seem to have a movie for this one. Uh, hmm. Okay, so we had September 6th, 
and do we have one more let's have a look at September 7th which was yesterday and we had an X yesterday strong solar activity sunspot 1283 is crackling with solar flares yesterday September 6th the active region produced an M5 erupted at universal time followed by an X2 class event at 2220 which again is 6 UT NASA Solar Dynamics Observatory recorded this extreme UV flash from the X flare Wow that's a that's a big flash folks that's a big sunspot so 1283 is what we should be observing right now right now the solar activity on the Sun has kicked up um, pretty significant in the last couple of days so solar activity has definitely uh, increased and uh, let's have a look at today and now we're up to date with today so is there a pattern oh strong flare activity continues on September 8 at 1546 universal time sunspot 1283 unleashed an M6 class solar flare this continues the active regions three-day trend of daily powerful eruptions yesterday's blast an X1 a class event produced a bright flash of extreme UV radiation and hurled an icky dark plume of plasma into space let's have a look at this one wow so this is you can see that you can see that yourself um, let's do a quick look at that again okay Wow, that's that's amazing. Let's have a look at that. That this was today, folks. So in the last three days, we went four or five years with no activity on the sun. All of a sudden, this year, 2011, it has kicked up. Um, starting back in February, March, August, and now we're into September. And let's have a look at that really quick. And we did look at the around solar flares start becoming more active around the other earthquakes the major earthquakes and we have three days already um, right now of solar activity of the Sun uh, really becoming extremely active what this all means um, who's to say but these are the things we're kind of taking taking uh, taking into account here the Georgia Guidestones on one of the highest hills in Elbert County Georgia stands a huge granite monument engraved in eight different languages on the four giant stones that support the common capstones or ten guides or commandments that monument is alternatively referred to as the Georgia guide stones or the American Stonehenge though rel relatively unknown to most people it is an important link to the occult hierarchy that dominates the world in which we live the or origin of that strange monument is shrouded in mystery because no one knows the true identity of the man or man who commissions its construction all that is known for certain is that in June 17 1979 a well-dressed articulate stranger visited the office of the Elburton granite finishing company and announced that he wanted to build an Ephesus to transmit a message to mankind he identified himself as R.C. Christian, but it soon became apparent that was not his real name. He said that he represented a group of men who wanted to offer direction to humanity, humanity. but to date, almost two decades later, no one knows who R.C. Christian really was. Or the names of those he represented it. Several things are apparent. The messages engraved on the Georgia Guidestones deal with four major fields. One, governance and the establishment of a world government. Two, population and reproduction control. Three, the environment and man's relationship to nature. And four, spirituality. In the public library in Elberton, I found a book written by a man who called himself R.C. Christian. I discovered that the monument he commissioned had been erected in recognition of Thomas Paine and the occult philosophy he espoused. Indeed, the Georgia Guidestones are used for occult ceremonies and mystic celebration to this very day. Tragically, only one religious leader in the area had the courage to speak out against the American Stonehenge and he has recently 